Is it worth taking niacin to lower your cholesterol? Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Westman and welcome to my channel where I review and debunk nutritional information online. In this video, thanks for sending it, I'll be reviewing a video done by Talking With Docs. They are a pair of orthopedic surgeons who have hundreds of videos on topics way beyond orthopedic surgery. We'll get into that in a minute, so be sure to wait till the end till you hear my final thoughts. I want to invite you to a free seven day, no sugar challenge from Adapt Your Life Academy. This is the perfect jumpstart toward better health. The goal of this challenge is to cut out all sources of added sugar for seven days and to limit your carbs to 150 grams per day. We will give you the full list of allowed foods. Making just one change to your diet eliminating sugar may not seem like a big step, but you'll be amazed at the impact this can have on your physical and mental well-being. Sign up to the challenge below. It's free. Can taking nice and lower your cholesterol and maybe reduce the need for statins? Listen, I'm no hero. I'm no nutritionist. I'm just an orthopedic surgeon. But I do have elevated cholesterol. Well, so time out. He's kind of saying, why listen to me? And, you know, this is a wonderful thing and a terrible thing called the internet. And so these orthopedic surgeons have a really fun time making videos. But is that really where you want to get your information from? You know, the bigger picture view here is, has healthcare really become entertainment? Or has entertainment become healthcare? We look at our, our children, our grandchildren, and see where they're getting information. It might even be shorter than this on TikTok or other sorts of places. And it really is a head scratcher why, like he's saying, why listen to me? I'm an orthopedic surgeon, but he has high cholesterol, so it affects him in a different way of saying it. I'm an internal medicine specialist, orthopedic surgeon, I'm not. So I don't talk about the latest orthopedic surgery that's being done. I think it's a wonderful and awesome thing. But I do know diet and weight loss and obesity treatments and internal medicine. And I like to stick into my lane. So if you're asking me, you know, what kind of best exercise, what kind of best orthopedic surgery you should have done, I'm not the one to ask about that, but I guess any doctor could be an expert about anything if they choose to do so. so let's hear what they say about niacin and uh, is it better than statins? Right. And I do take a statin. Right. So this hit home for me. Okay. So a few days ago before we started researching this in depth, I started taking niacin because I heard it can lower your cholesterol. Stick around to the end to see if he's still taking niacin. Welcome to Talking With Docs, I'm Dr. Bradley. What are you trying to say? Should I stop? What? We'll see. Okay. So what is niacin? Okay. Niacin is vitamin B3 or most, in the most common form is nicotinic acid. Nicotinic acid, vitamin B3, it's water soluble. Water soluble. Water, so you would think, hey, it's pretty safe to take because any excess, you're going to pee it out. Right. Our bodies do uptake a small amount into our red blood cells, so it helps them circulating extra volume, but most of it does get excreted. It is primarily found in food, so meat, fish, poultry, nuts, legumes. It's very, very common. It's everywhere. And in North America, supplemented fortified cereals. We could do a whole video, and we should, about the role of cereals, why we eat so much cereal, who told us to eat cereal, and maybe why it's not the best idea. Okay. But North Americans typically get a lot of niacin. Another thing is we can make a very small amount of it from tryptophan. Okay. Commonly found in a bunch of things, including turkey. It's actually not the best source. We have a video about that. Who you call in turkey? Who you call in turkey? And in your body, it plays a very important role in many, many chemical processes that occur. Like hundreds. Your body sort of takes uh, takes energy, how it utilizes energy, how it gets energy from food. Yeah. So it's crucial in those in those processes. And so the other, you, you need it. You yeah, hundred percent. And the other key thing that's been a little more trendy is its role in making and repairing DNA. So as an anti-aging molecule or something that has an antioxidant property. And this is a very, very common supplement that people that are super into anti-aging have been taking and now there's some question whether or not they should be taking it or not. So getting into the, uh, the weeds here, but if you want to know what niacin does, fantastic. It's a essential vitamin that we get in the food that we eat. Now we get into the next level of sort of 
of, uh, oh, I don't know, oversimplification. If there's some evidence that taking a pill or a product or a vitamin for people who eat a typical American or Western diet and there's some benefit for that, great. If you're one of my patients, you're not eating a typical Western or American diet. So you're getting a lot better nutritional profile. And I don't think you need to be supplementing with niacin or other or the other vitamins, even though a lot of other people think you do. And in a context when you're eating really bad food, the standard typical American diet, maybe it is a good idea to take a vitamin like that. Uh, but we still haven't heard much now. Uh, we'll get into what it does and why it might be good for you. Okay, so let's look at the literature as we always do. Yep. And, and both of you and I have reviewed a bunch of papers on yep. this. What do you think one truth is now? One thing is yes, it seems to be proven well that taking a niacin supplement. So there's a difference here between getting niacin from your food and taking a niacin supplement. Right? Okay, before we get there, because that's actually a good point. So is, is it common to have deficiency? The first answer is no. Severe deficiency causes something called pellagra. And this is not so uncommon in underdeveloped countries or people that have severe malnutrition. So people that have severe diseases causing malnutrition, people that have anorexia, people sure. that are alcoholics, unfortunately. So those people, but it's actually difficult to measure. So if you measure niacin in your blood, it's not a very reliable way to measure your total niacin. So the way that they do it is typically with some of the breakdown metabolites in your urine, but this is just not commonly done. Okay. Okay, that's a little side. So your question is... Well, yeah, on oh. that too. And, and, and when you talk about deficiency, it, uh, as, as with every deficiency, it's a, la it's a food source deficiency yes. or a process in your body that's not metabolizing the food properly. Right. Those are the two ways. And so the food source deficiencies we often see in developing countries. So yes, it can, you can have a deficiency. Right. However, in developed countries, it's Pretty very uncommon. rare to have a deficiency. Yeah. So, so don't worry about having a deficiency of, of niacin. So the question is, should I take a niacin supplement? Right. Or literally, should I take a niacin supplement to help bring my cholesterol down? Right. And that is what I was getting at before. It seems to be a truism that if you go on a niacin supplement, yep. your measured triglyceride level and LDL level in your blood will go down, your HDL level will go up. Yep. Okay. That okay. seems to be shown in the literature. Leave a comment if you're taking niacin and your cholesterol went down or, or what your right. thoughts are on this. And that's even if you're on a statin. Agreed. In addition to a statin, it will do that. Okay. Now the big question is, will that help you in terms of reducing your chance of dying? Right. So your all-cause mortality, we call it. Yeah. Or reducing your chance of a cardio cardiovascular event. A cardiovascular event sounds like a fun thing with tents and <laughs> balloons and a party, but a cardiovascular uh -huh. event is not a good thing. It means a heart attack, stroke, or death. Yeah, yeah, that's Paul. Yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah. Okay, so so what does it show about that? So it's a lot of clinical trials, and they're they're all not exactly the same. Part of the trouble with some of these trials is that often it was comparing a statin to statin plus niacin, and that was part of the trouble. And some of them included niacin that had a slow release or another agent that helped reduce some of the side effects from the niacin. So it's not a totally homogeneous pool of participants or studies. But the meta-analyses have mostly concluded to say, hey, it will do all these things to your blood values, but it does not necessarily translate into reduced cardiovascular no, events. That is yet to be proven. Yeah, so they're reading the literature best they can. Again, you can get information from people who are actually doing the science. Those are the investigators of different papers, the ones who actually are in charge of designing and interpreting papers. You can even watch videos of these reports online. If you've watched the lean mass hyperresponder videos from about the cholesterol levels in those who don't eat carbs, you can actually see the research at meetings as it's being presented. Or you can wait, you know, years pass and people read the articles like, like these folks. And, but stepping back, the niacin targets the triglyceride and HDL. And if you've heard about me speaking about metabolic syndrome and cholesterol before, the way I view it, there's an old way, the total and LDL cholesterol. There's a new way, the triglyceride and HDL. That's called metabolic syndrome. It also includes the increased abdominal circumference, increased glucose, increased blood pressure. So it's, it's not just the blood levels. But niacin has always been sort of out the, outside the statin world. And it's because it targets this other dimension in the blood, the metabolic syndrome. 
a low carb diet targets the metabolic syndrome as well, if you've heard me talk about it. And so niacin actually has an effect like a low carb diet. And so if you're on a low carb diet, even if you're oh, well, okay, they didn't found the meta analyses and the studies basically show there wasn't improvement in all cause mortality by niacin. Well, there's not a whole huge improvement with other medications either, which is my argument for why you want to use lifestyle as the main intervention to prevent or reduce your risk for heart disease. Yeah, so the, the medicines that we have today are, are not all that powerful or effective to counteract a bad diet. And that's the way I view it now, is that if you're eating a typical American diet, most doctors are not going to talk to you about the food you eat, and they'll give you medications. So anyway, so he learned about, the orthopedic surgeon learned about how niacin can lower the blood cholesterol, and but now went to the literature and found that it really didn't reduce all-cause mortality. It does not appear to reduce, and in fact, I read an article that showed it might actually increase your cardiovascular risk. Right, so there's- now, Why? How can this be? It's raising your HDL, it's lowering your LDL, it's lowering your triglycerides. How can it be not good for you in that sense? That right, so one paper that was released a couple months ago talked about how maybe one of the metabolites, something called 4PY, may be implicated in increased cardiovascular events. This is a hypothesis. It certainly has not been proven, but this is maybe explaining why the events were not seen to go down. And studies. another reason why these cardiovascular events, all-cause mortality, death, may not be reduced with niacin is because if you think of LDL and triglycerides, that's, that's just, just like one molecule. Yep. They represent a bunch of different molecules. HDL is not one molecule. It's a bunch of different molecules. Yep. Although when you measure, you're measuring an average of these in your blood. Yep. The specific ones, those are more sophisticated tests that are required to, to measure the specific ones. Yep. And it turns out that maybe niacin increases the HDLs that aren't actually good for you. Those right. sub-molecules in the population of HDL that aren't good for you. And that might be one of the reasons that we're not seeing the clinical results that should be expected from the blood results. One of the other issues is that the RDA for niacin is in the 14 to 16 milligram area. And the treatment in a lot of these studies is 500 to up to 3,000 milligrams. So we're talking like a hundredfold potentially to what your RDA is. So that's part of the issue. And you also, but you also got to think about where did the RDA come from? The yep. RDA is just a man-made number that yes. some people in an office somewhere figured was the right amount. Well, I think it was also, ba well, I think it was based on the urine test of the metabolites to show that you're, because if you're spilling lots of it, that means you're yeah. receiving more than you can possibly use. Yeah, yeah, fair. But, I mean, you can't hang your hat totally on RDAs either, I don't think. Okay. Because it's not a hook. Yeah. Well, I think the, the main point they're getting at is, is that the limits or recommendations that the government makes is based on expert opinion, not necessarily on the best randomized trials, experimental evidence, that sort of thing. The interesting thing about the clinical studies, again, is that the niacin studies are done in people who eat a traditional diet. And there is a, a lot of, of bad stuff that a traditional diet can do or a traditional lifestyle. All right, so bottom line, okay, yep. and what about the side effects? Okay. Because every time you do something, there's a likely chance of side effects. Right, and we recently mm -hmm. talked in our vitamin D and K video saying vitamin K is pretty safe. So if you take a whole bunch of it, it's probably not, we're not sure if it's going to do what you're hoping it's going to do, but it's probably not going to hurt you. With, with niacin, there are some very um, predictable side effects, so some gastrointestinal ones like nausea and vomiting. The niacin flush, they thought, is related to high doses, single doses, where there's a rapid increase, and prostaglandins are released that cause vasodilation. So you get a red face that is inconvenient and sometimes embarrassing for people. Sometimes it can be a little bit itchy, sometimes can be associated with um, a headache and some low blood pressure because of that vasodilation. So that was one big thing. The other one is your blood sugars. Okay? Right. This you, you could be in a situation where you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, which normally I'm okay with. Yeah. But in this case, if it's going to increase your blood sugars, right. that carries with it a whole host of other risks of other diseases and other problems. Yep. So you don't want to do that, especially on a statin, because the statins can also lead which to diabetes. Ironically. Yeah, yeah. And, and those two big trials, the AIM trial, and so the AIM High trial and the Thrive trial, also found. Yeah, poorly controlled diabetes, new onset diabetes, high risk of infection, as well as bleeding. So these are, these are things that are very real and have to be taken into consideration if you are going to consider a supplement.
always talk to your healthcare provider before you go on a supplement. Right. Bottom line. Bottom line you, for me is, first of all, if someone writes that you guys are big pharma shills, that is irritating. Because we're not telling we're not you to, we're not telling you to take a statin. What we are saying is that we're just looking at the evidence. We don't make the evidence. We're just reporting it. Right. So niacin definitely lowers your cholesterol levels and raises your good cholesterol levels, but it does not translate into reduced cardiovascular events. So we would say proceed with caution. Do not stop your statin based on this evidence in the video. Give it some consideration. Talk to your doctor, and when you are taking it, monitor it carefully. That's okay. a long bottom line. That's, yeah, okay. that's, so what, that's your bottom paragraph. So what's your bottom line? So you started taking it a little while ago. I'm not going to take it anymore. Okay. There's six bucks I won't get back at the store where I buy right. it. Or I don't know how much it costs. But yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's worth the risks. If niacin is in so many foods that I eat anyways. Yeah. I'm an omnivore. I eat a bunch of those foods. So I think I'm going to get enough niacin there. I think always, I think if you're considering taking a supplement, look at the foods that have that supplement in it and choose those foods instead of the supplement. That's always been my go-to. And for me, what I really wish could be done would be a trial where they compared a population that maybe is at risk of heart disease to take nothing versus niacin because now we have the gold standard is to lower your cholesterol with a statin. So sometimes some people would argue that it's not ethical to prevent people from taking a statin and just give them niacin. So it's a very hard study to do now. Very difficult study to do now, for yeah. sure. Ethical issues with doing that kind of a study. However, my bottom line is, yeah. nope. There you go. Well, so, wow, they got into a lot at the end there, including their um, endorsement and belief in the old paradigm as the only way to go about things, the cholesterol lowering with statin medicines. Not that it can't help, but it's not the only way to do things. And so again, don't listen to orthopedic surgeons for advice about diet. And don't listen to me about the latest information on orthopedic surgery. I might talk about something that I learned in residency 20, 30 years ago, and, and now a lot has changed in orthopedic surgery. But I, you know, I have to say that I, I like that they're trying to educate people and, uh, and that he ended up not taking the niacin because there wasn't any evidence for it. But I've talked to them, I've, but I've heard them talk about other diet and, and cholesterol sorts of uh, old paradigm wisdom that that's too bad. So I hope that they'll update their understanding about low carb diets, about metabolic syndrome being a valid treatment. Although if he would be looking for the experimental evidence that treating metabolic syndrome with diet saves lives and all cause mortality, that study doesn't exist. So we're in the conundrum is there are many lifestyles and the long-term studies like drug trials haven't been done on these lifestyles because there's no one to fund them, but there are companies that would fund the medications. So we have studies on these medications with a traditional lifestyle without manipulation of the lifestyle. At the end of the day, if you do a low carb diet, you do a carbohydrate restricted diet, you're targeting the metabolic syndrome, the triglyceride and HDL in the blood, kind of like niacin does and, and even a little more powerful than that. Looking at the lipidology, there is an organization called the National Lipid Association. I've attended those meetings and they look at the cholesterol like it's a disease and they treat it with medications. Remember, cholesterol is not the disease. It's atherosclerosis. It's whether you have hardening of the arteries or not. That's what we're trying to reduce or eliminate. So again, this is a good video to just keep in mind to consider the source of the information that you're getting and maybe talk to doctors who have been trained in nutrition and diet about diet uh, and talk to surgeons who are trained in surgery about surgery. I hope that's helpful. Please like, subscribe, ring the notification bell. I'm putting new information out on Wednesdays and Fridays. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And check out AdapterLifeAcademy.com.